Welcome back to Big Board again. Whew. It's been a busy weekend and uh, I hope your weekend has been good too and, and busy in a good way. Um, firstly, you know, uh, we're going to have a look at Storm of the Gap and this is one of the expansions and we're going to do an expansion scenario and all that sort of fun stuff. But first off, I just really wanted to say thank you to everybody who has uh, chipped in and done what they can for all the first responders. Uh, I want to uh, thank those that have done their best to try and maintain a positive attitude and outlook during these challenging times for everyone worldwide. And I also would like to thank everyone uh, for who, who is looking at the data and uh, not trying to get uh, too emotional about things and also trying to be rational about what's going on. So. Let's all keep a stiff upper lip, as the British say, and and uh, be mindful uh, of each other, and it'll all work out for the best. And I also want to give a special thank you to all the folks that have uh, subscribed in the last few weeks, both on the blog and at the YouTube channel. Uh, the blog has seen a 60% increase in readership, uh, lots more views, a 60% increase in views this uh, last month. And I don't know whether that's because I'm spamming you and the same four people keep reading it or whether we've had an actual increase in uh, unique views as well. I, I didn't really delve into the, the data. I've been having some challenges with the blog, uh, uh, te technical challenges anyway. So it is what it is. Uh, so thanks for uh, watching and commenting and subscribing. It, uh, it is a uh, affirmation that is much appreciated. I do this, I'm doing this extra gameplay and posting and live stuff and stories and pictures really for everybody, right? Not just for me, but it's for, it's for you guys because uh, uh, hopefully this will help take your mind off things for a few minutes, right? So talking about taking your mind off things, let's see if I can pronounce this incorrectly. Uh, Storm in the Gaps. Moore's Test. This is a Storm and Steel second wave. Uh, first scenario in the campaign. Not promising we'll play them all, but I haven't really played with the you know, sort of second echelon check units or anything like that. So, you know, we're going to, we're heads up with T55s versus Leo 1s and Martyrs and fun stuff like that in improved positions. And you can see the campaign map here. You, you play each scenario and then kind of roll through to the next one. And there's various levels of linkage depending on uh, depending on the scenario and the campaign. There's a handful of campaigns in the in the in the combined two two modules. So in this particular video, what I thought I would do is have a look at, and this is the uh, second set of uh, reinforcements that come on the board. Have a look at what the scenario is asking us to achieve uh, for both sides, which hopefully you can see here. So we're playing on map 46, uh, it's a 12 turn scenario. Uh, the the checks have their, you get a free activation first turn. And uh, they've got to capture some terrain and exit some units, right? So it's all pretty straightforward stuff. Uh, you can see all that there. And I will show you the map and let's talk about the potential tactics that both sides might use and how we might uh, play that out, right? So here's the map. Um, we've got a fair bit of glare here because I've got blinds and things up because it's kind of a murky day and I don't like the yellow light off of uh, off all of my lamps and they spray they spray uh, reflections. So let's just deal with what we got. So 9T55s uh, come on on board. They're AM2s, whatever that means. So they're probably upgraded from a base 55, I imagine. They seem to have an okay armor save, two fives. It's not awesome. It's not terrible. Uh, and they they have a decent gun on them, uh, range of 11 with uh, three dice, needing sixes to hit. Well, so they're not great. But we can, <clears throat> we can do moving fire with them and things like that. So that's kind of cool. But the terrain that we're faced with, let me see if we can get a better image here. Coming in on the north end of the edge of the board, there's a road here and a road here. And in fact, there's also a road all the way over here, I'm just noticing, which might be interesting as well. So if our objective is to capture these two hexes, 
And then with the follow-on reinforcements, these uh, BMP equivalents or BTR equivalents or BRDM equivalents, whatever they may be, uh, and that, that infantry and those engineers, their job is to exit from here, right? So they get, uh, they got to get six guys off or five guys off. What did it say? What's that Warsaw Pact win? They get exit seven or more non-HQ OT-64 units off the map. Seven or more. There's only six of them, dude. Oh, that must mean the vehicles and the men. Otherwise, that doesn't make sense. So we'll have to double check that. We'll check the errata to see if that's an error. There are a handful of errors in these scenarios, and it is what it is. There's errata. Uh, you do a big new rule book like this and big scenario book stuff happens, but uh, it's annoying, uh, but it is what it is. So let's... Uh, Let's just keep going. So let me uh, let me put the camera down over here. And it'll just give us a little bit of a view. Can I turn this light off? Maybe that'll help. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> Plunged us into darkness, but here we go. So tactically, what are we going to do? Uh, we could come in on this road, come through the woods, sneak out over this uh, this ridge here, pop, the, uh, pop onto the edge of the ridge, uh, pop onto the edge of that ridge here, shoot into the town, kill all the, the bad German, West German guys, race off the board. It's an option. Come straight up the guts, down in the open, get chewed alive. Uh, there's only three, there's only four platforms that can shoot a tank. There's the Leos, and there's an AT, ATGM here somewhere in Milan. Uh, actually... And see, that might also be an error there because that is a green. That is a green number. And I think that needs to be either red or black for it to be able to fire at hard vehicles. So I'm going to have to check that. No, no, I think it's right. I think we're, we're good with greens. Okay, so if, that, if that's the case, if we are good with green units, that means that all of these units then are also eligible to fire at the bad guys. So, third option, so running down the middle here, running the gauntlet, third option coming down this side road here, and then coming across. Because you keep in mind, we've got turn one, we've got nine, nine T-55, so maybe they're coming on trying to soften things up with their two activations they'll probably get. And then on the second turn, we need to bring the second formation in with all the infantry, the trucks that need to exit the map. I can really only afford to lose two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. So I can only afford to lose five of these guys. That means I need to keep four vehicles uh, up and three infantry units up. Uh, so I've got to keep the majority of my force intact. So I have to get this top stack, basically, all these off. I can afford to lose all of these guys. And that's a little tactical problem. Now, the, the, for, the, for the West Germans, I'm trying to find a spot that doesn't have a window or a, or a bleeding uh, light on it. Uh, for the West Germans, they have two improved positions here. We need to consider where we place those. Uh, we've got the town, which gives us some natural uh, benefits as well. The cool thing about improve... Whoa! Uh, this uh, phone is too heavy for this stand. And, uh, whoa, just, I'm so glad. I've got such a pro, such a pro set up here. It's awesome. People keep asking me where I get my stands, and uh, they don't believe that it's really a $4 stand, and it really is a $4 stand. I have a really nice expensive one around the corner, and it's crap. Uh, I've got uh, improved positions. They let us ignore the first hit. Very important. I also have two HE arty strikes, which, which will do a fair amount of damage to soft skin vehicles and to infantry. So where we place these guys to thwart uh, three potential approaches is difficult. I'm seriously considering putting a, a tank in an improved position here. So we can ignore that first hit coming off uh, the plinkers, the T-55s, or any, uh, there's a, 
there is a uh, 80 gm unit there are two of them in fact i think no they're 82 millimeter recoilless rifles so uh that the tanks are the only guys that can hurt me at the moment the infantry uh, cannot it would seem so i if i can you know turtle up with the tanks cover this approach and then maybe put one here another tank here cover this approach here somewhere or here even potentially here but i don't really just want to be at all in this town uh that kind of scares me a little bit so i could put one of the tanks here one of the tanks here and then maybe have one in the woods hiding for the time being and then the inf there's only uh, one infantry unit and a couple of jaguars and uh there's a jaguar and a uh gepard there's only supposed to be one jag i think and a martyr as well so we're going to work out where we're going to put those guys so that's the that's the the game i think the game plan for us i'm inclined to, to bring the tanks down this road and then possibly come this way with the infantry i think that might be a split the difference type of thing versus running straight up the guts keeping in mind we only have Oh, we have 12 turns. That's a lifetime in this game. So, all right. Let's go roll some dice. We'll talk to you soon. By the way, before I go, if you have comments on this or ideas on the strategy, post a comment. Let me know how you would handle this. And I'll have a look at it and compare it. And if mine doesn't work out, maybe I'll uh, reset and play your version of uh, what should happen. So uh, post a note. Let me know. Cheers.